Hey everybody, this is A7X fan Ben, and this should be episode number 13 of the collection review series. This will be about Barbary Corsair ships. So the Barbary Corsairs were the first of the minor factions. They came out uh, in Barbary Coast, the fourth set, released back in 2005. And they're one of the best minor factions, if not probably the best, because they have a lot of fast ships, as we'll see. They have decent quantity, they have more ships just in general, than the other three minor factions, the, the Jade Rebellion, the Vikings, and the Mercenaries. And uh, they have some pretty good gold runners and hybrid ships as well. So let's jump straight into it. In this set, the Corsairs replaced the Pirates. So we've got ship number 001 in Barbary Coast, the Nubian Prince, which is a pretty good ship in her own right. She's got that really good but also annoying defensive ability. So S immunity. Uh, only one really good cannon, but uh, she has just enough firepower to maybe be a hybrid a little bit. Um, outside of the ability, there's not a ton that stands out, but uh, she looks really nice too. Cool name, so pretty good ship for them, but it gets even better as we'll see soon enough. Uh, the Ivory Star, the second ship they've got. Uh, this one has L immunity, so immune to L range cannons. Um, kind of middling kind of middling stats this one's not too special I would recommend a world hater we'll see that in the crew video Murat Rice I believe and uh, the Ivory Star is mostly just a gunship but she's not too not too exceptional and you'll notice the the Corsairs don't have a lot of great gunships um, usually their cannons get worse towards the stern so they start off decent or great at the bow and then they get worse towards the back of the ship as you can already see from the first two ships here so they don't really have a lot of good gunships. They also don't have anything bigger than four masts. All their ships are galleys, so they're oared ships. So they can't do damage by ramming, but they can row when they don't have masts. Um, but there's no five-masted or six-masted galleys, so they don't have a ton of huge ships. They did get seven of the four masters, though, so they still have some size. Uh, the Jekyll's Teeth is the third one. This is one of their better gunships. SL Speed. Reasonable cannons for the Corsairs. Um, you kind of have to lower your standards when you're looking for a Corsair gunship because like I said, they don't have very many good ones. They have almost no ships with three masts or larger whose cannon ranks average three or better. So you're usually going to get some fours and even fives mixed in even if you get a few good cannons. This one could maybe play a hybrid role with the plus one to boarding rolls and then galley allows you to not be pinned. So with the speed, Captain Helmsman, you could you could play a hybrid role with the Jackal's Teeth. The Terror of Gibraltar, this one is the cheapest of the, the four masted galleys, but for good reason, because their cannons are pretty, pretty terrible actually. Uh, relatively low cargo, and the speed and the ability aren't really much to get excited about. There are some really great pirate name crew you could put on, like maybe uh, Crimson Angel from Ocean's Edge, which was in another collection review series. She gives you uh, SAT and World Hater for just five points, then you could have a Captain and Helmsman aboard too, but that being said, this isn't really an exceptional ship. So the Crescent Moon is uh, definitely better. This one I like as actually a gold runner for them. They have better options as we'll see soon, but SL Speed, five cargo, 13 points, reroll. The cannons are really bad. I think the worst of any of the four masters I believe that they have. And uh, the reroll ability is perfect for Kirad Din, who's their fleet admiral crew, Admiral's Action. And you know about that combo if you saw the, the Barbary Coast set review podcast. So the Crescent Moon is a good gold runner. I would usually recommend Kirad Din and then a Helmsman, maybe an Explorer and or Oarsman, depending on points available and your preferences. The Genisserie's Blood. This one is actually just a straight gunship. This is one of their few larger ships that has a defined role as a combat ship rather than a hybrid or a gold runner. So you've got good speed. You can see the cannons are all rank three, which is pretty darn good for the Corsairs. This is maybe their best gunship. And then she's got the reverse captain ability, which is cool in terms of fog banks, because you could, you could put a smoke pot specialist on here and then um, shoot that out while shooting at an opposing ship and then duck into it with the reverse captain ability and then you've got really good speed too so this is one of their best gunships but also i think it looks like their most expensive ship as well uh the fire gene 
Genie is uh, this one is kind of an enigma. You've got a 2L cannon in the bow, and then they get really bad after that. And then she's got S boarding. So this one's kind of a tricky one to use. I like to try to put Arush Barbarossa aboard, who you'll see in the next episode of this series. He's a gold capture crew like Bonnie Peel. So with S board, a helmsman and an oarsman, that could be a pretty decently effective combo. But as is, this ship kind of lacks a role and is kind of worse off for it. Uh, the Sea Dragon, uh, this one also has S board, also at 13 points. Uh, this one is probably a better option though because you've got more cargo and the cannons are arguably slightly more useful even though you have one less of them. So the Sea Dragon is okay, but we're about to see ships that are quite a lot better. So we go to the next page, Persian Victory. And we're into the three masters, as you could probably tell. Uh, the Persian Victory also has the reverse captain ability, like the Fire Gene. And this one has good speed, but everything else is a little bit lacking. Um, we're going to see a lot of good cargo holds coming up soon. So three on a three master is not too good for the Corsairs. And of course the cannons aren't too good either. So the Persian Victory is one I would pass on. She doesn't really have a good role. And now we start to get into the, some of the super cheap ones. The Winds of Vengeance, only six points for four cargo at good at a decent clip to decent speed. So you see she has a negative ability, but you're not going to be rolling for the cannons anyway, ideally, because they're bad. And you're just going to put a helmsman on to use it as a gold runner, or even empty maybe. Um, so this is one of their good cheap ships. You'll notice a trend, they have a lot of good six point empty gold runner type ships. This is the first of, I don't know, maybe four, five, or six uh, similar ships actually that are about six points with four or five cargo and good enough speed to be a gold runner empty or with a helmsman. Wicked Kareen, this is one of their rare more gunship type ships. Uh, you can see the cannons average out to about 3S and then she really hates the Americans so that's a slight combat bonus. Usually not going to affect the game though. And then good speed and cargo though. So the Wicked Kareen is a pretty fair deal for 10 points. I would say this is a, a pretty good ship. So I would probably use her as a hybrid. But that being said, she's one of the more combat oriented in terms of cannons and abilities. The Algiers was my first Barbary Corsair ship. Um, along with the Griffin, which we'll see soon. Yeah, this one is really good. It's got great cargo, very good speed. Uh, the cannons are actually usable, but I would use that as a gold runner. You've got the island treasure trading ability. So the Algiers, if you use the Corsairs, this is going to be one of your one of your favorite ships because she's just she's kind of packed or stacked in every way. So I would highly recommend trying to get this one if you like the Corsairs or if you like to play the galleys or if you're just interested in getting more into the minor factions in general. The Algiers is one of the best Corsair ships in the game. The Meshud. It's kind of like a slightly upgraded version of the Wicked Kareen. She hates the French instead of the Americans, and the cannons are all rank 3 or better. So this is probably the best, or one of the best, Barbary Corsair 3-masted gunships. Um, but with a 4 cargo, you could play a hybrid role as well, which is probably what I would recommend. Probably Captain and Helmsman, and then leave some space open for gold. Maybe put a Firepot Specialist with a 2S cannon at the bow. Devon's Punishment is kind of similar to the Wicked Kareen and Mashud. So this one is anti-Spanish, and then everything else is pretty similar. So you could make a, a case that's slightly better than the Wicked Kareen, because the Spanish better than the American. You got the 2L versus 2S at the bow, but either way, um, it just depends on what you think your opponent's going to use faction-wise, or if you know what they're going to use. Um, but in general, just another decent hybrid. Now uh, the Sultan Sword is one I've never been impressed with. This one has just very middling stats. You can see all the ships we've gone through on this page except for the Persian Victory is have, have had more than three cargo. So the Sultan Sword combines below average cargo, at least for the Corsairs, with terrible cannons and a really boring ability that doesn't complement the cargo hold because you can't really be a raider that effectively. Um, so the Sultan Sword is just just not a very effective ship. I think she could have been about eight points. That would make her at least potentially usable. 
Uh, the Splendor, or maybe even seven points. <laughs> uh, the Splendor is one I kind of like. I think he's kind of a dark horse. This one has the filching gold ability. They turned it into a keyword later on. This one has blazing speed and SSS, so you don't really need a helmsman. And then she's got a 2S cannon at the bow, too. So this one, I would say this one lacks a role because she's kind of, I don't know, almost like a wants to be a hybrid or an empty gold runner and or a raider. So it's kind of hard to know what to do with her. I would probably put a captain on um, and maybe just leave it at that because then you could use the 2S cannon and then you'd still have two car spaces open to take gold from islands or maybe from other ships because then... If you combine the filching gold ability with a boarding win, you could take two coins from the same ship in the same turn to fill up the other two spaces. So the Splendor, I think, is kind of underrated among Corsair ships, but it's partly because it's tough to use her in a, in a defined role. But I think she's a little bit underrated. The Marrakesh is, here is another one of the six-point cheapos. Uh, six points, three caro, SL speed, so that's just a great deal for gold running in general. And so you, you basically just hope you're not going to go up against the Spanish, but you want to keep her out of combat anyway because her guns are atrocious. So so they average 5S, 4S, 5S, 6S. So the average cannon is short range, rank 5. Uh, the Golden Peacock is a really good one. I love this one. And she does have a really dis distinctive uh, sail and hull design, coloring design. So the artwork is cool. She doesn't have like a special ability outside of the ship type keyword but she doesn't really need one because she's got good speed good cargo the guns are just not that important really at least there's no five or six s's so they're actually kind of usable compared to some of the ships we just saw and uh, i would run this as an empty gold runner or with a helmsman and or explorer just to get gold pretty much so the golden peacock is definitely a good one Tiger's Eye. This is the best Barbary Corsair ship in the game. Pretty much undisputed. Um, you can't really argue a good case against her. Uh, you can see she's just stacked in every category. Even the cannons are good. I'm not sure why they they made this one so good. And then some other ones like the Persian Victory is a point more, but clearly inferior. But anyway, the Tiger's Eye, defensive ability, big cargo hold, fantastic speed. Uh, good cannons for the Corsairs at least, all for a, a extremely reasonable 12 point price. She could be 15 or 16 and still see decent usage. Um, so the Tiger's Eye, their best ship, um, kind of overused definitely, um, but for a good reason, so whatever. Silent Death, now we're into the Two Masters, and this one has S-Board, Good cannons, good cargo. This one is pretty much good in every way. The only problem is she's 12 points. So you could get the Marrakesh and Winds of Vengeance. You could get seven cargo running gold versus here. You're probably gonna use a Captain Helmsman. Then you've got two cargo left and it's more fragile. You've got two masts versus six. So the Silent Death by herself is a good ship. But when you look at all the other Corsair options when building a Barbary fleet, uh, she's going to pale in terms of some of the cheaper options. And that's where the courses really thrive. They've got a lot of good cheap ships. And that's why they're the best gold running minor faction. And probably the best minor faction in general. But this is still a strong ship. So I would do a hybrid roll. Um, kind of like a hybrid raider. So you could you could do all three things. You could fight, um, get gold from wild islands. And then get gold from other ships too. Between galley not being pinned. And then uh, S-board obviously. Uh, the Bay's Revenge. Is a little bit slightly disappointing, but still kind of stacked, really. I mean, good speed, good cargo. The cannons are fine for a Barbary ship. And then she's got reverse captain, so similar to the Persian victory up here. And the, um, not the fire gene, but the Janissary's blood. You could try the smoke pot specialist reverse captain strategy where you shoot and then duck into a fog bank. Better with a bigger ship because you have more cannons to actually use, but. Bay's Revenge isn't too bad, but once again, kind of like the Silent Death, she's kind of just overshadowed by the really good cheap gold runners they've got. Scorpion, I've never really liked too much, um, which you can kind of see, you can kind of tell that's a trend with the plus one to boarding roll ability ships. Um, kind of makes the ship boring by default sometimes. Um, this one I would recommend using Empty Gold Runner or with a Captain and then keep a few spaces open as like a, I guess a hybrid, but 
this one just doesn't really excel in anything. She doesn't have like the four cargo, but her neither of her cannons are great, so she's kind of just a middling ship. So kind of like a subpar hybrid, at least for the Corsairs. So well, they've got a lot of better options. The Gallows is a rare pure gunship they've got. Only two cargo, but good speed. Uh, two S cannons, both of them. So very good firepower for a small ship. And uh, pirate crew can use their abilities. Not super useful, but you could pull in uh, Crimson Angel from Ocean's Edge uh, with a captain as well. For example, um, you could use Calypso, which I like to talk about. Because um, she's a one-of-a-kind crew that only the pirates can use. But overall, the Gallows is a good, a good gunship if a little bit pricey compared to some of their gold options. Uh, the Desert Wind has the same S immunity as uh, the Nubian Prince. This one also has good speed, good cargo. There's not too much to complain about. It's just that the 13 points puts her in the company of the Silent Death and the Bay's Revenge as ships that could have been a bit cheaper because um, the ones that are cheaper really overshadow these. For example, the next ship is the Aga's Whip, and here you can only spend six points to get the same cargo SS speed, you'd probably put a helmsman on the Egg's Whip, but the Egg's Whip even has good cannons too, so you could put a captain and a helmsman and be kind of a hybrid ship. And you can see why the cost is low, she's got a negative ability. Probably could have been more expensive actually, like seven or eight points would have been fine. Um, but the Egg's Whip continues the trend of super cheap six point Barbary Gold Runners, so it looks, looks like that's three, because we also had the Marrakesh. And then the Winds of Vengeance, I think there's a, two more maybe, or somewhere around there. The Pasha's Delight is a really bizarre ship. She's only got one cargo space, but she has LL speed. So what would you do with her? I don't really know. Um, maybe a scout ship, but her cannons aren't good enough to put a captain aboard. Uh, she's got L immunity, but I don't really know why. Uh, she's only got the one cargo. She could have more and be the same price. So this one's not worth nine points. So the Pasha's Delight is a rare Corsair ship that has less cargo than she has masts. Maybe the only one by the looks of it and uh, not really worth using. The Queen of Sheba is the opposite. This is a fantastic ship. You can make a pretty good case that this is maybe the second or third best Barbary Corsair ship in the game. Um, Six points, five cargo, SS move, both 2S cannons. And if you're wondering why the cost is so low, she's got that negative ability, um, which might actually come into play, unlike the other one we saw with that ability. Because this one is a good hybrid, um, for a small ship at least. I would do Captain Helmsman, and then you could play around with Firepot Specialist or Explorer or Oarsman and uh, see how she does. Or you could just do Helmsman, just make her a Gold Runner. But either way, the Queen of Sheba is a really good ship. You get a lot of value for your points, bang for your buck, and this is the fourth uh, super cheap uh, six-point gold runner. The next one is the Sahara, which has good cargo, good speed, good cannons. Pretty much everything is good. Uh, she's got a faction-specific ability, so that kind of increases her cost where you don't want it to. Um, she would have been a little better at eight or nine points, but that being said, the Sahara is still a solid ship. She's more expensive, more expensive, but she's still more flexible than the uh, than the similar gallows we saw here. She's, you pay two points more for two cargo, which is probably worth it, really, because the, the Sahara can multitask, whereas the gallows can't. Uh, the Dervish is something I found out in the Barbary Corsair uh, or Barbary Coast set review podcast. It's not as good as I thought it was. Um, you basically put a helmsman on. And then you've got LS speed for six points, but then you can only take two coins because the speed goes to S when you reach the cargo limit. So it's not really worth maxing out. So the Dervish, as a result, is kind of lackluster compared to the other six point ships, such as the Griffin, which we'll see in a second. The Morocco, though, is actually really cool. She's kind of like a more dedicated version of the Queen of Sheba. You can see same cargo, same speed, but two points more, no negative ability, but her cannons are terrible, so she can't do a hybrid roll. This is just a plain gold runner, um, but a really good one at that. She, so she's got a spying ability, and that will definitely help her get gold and avoid negative UTs. 
I would say the Queen of Sheba is definitely a better ship because you get um, you get better cannons for two less points. Uh, so it's worth the ability to trade off. But that being said, the Morocco is still one of their better gold runners. So, and the Griffin, I think this completes the uh, the five ship category of super cheap six point gold runners. The Whisper is good too, but I don't think she quite cuts it on cargo. The Griffin, another six pointer, uh, two masts, four cargo, SL speed, good cannons, everything's good except for the ability, which keeps the cost down, so not much to complain about. Probably not going to face the Americans all the time, so Griffin. This was my, the other ship that was in my first pack of Barbary Coast. I got two Corsair ships, so I was pretty lucky there. I think it was my only pack of Barbary Coast back in 2005. I don't think I got more until 2011 or 12. Um, but the Griffin is just a great empty gold runner, or you could put a captain on, and try to utilize those guns a little bit. Either either roll will be pretty darn good. And like I said, with the Dervish, just to put a Helmsman on, then you've got LS Speed, three cargo, but you can only really take two. So you can start to see where the Griffin is better because she doesn't need the Helmsman to get that speed. And then she's got four cargo instead of two usable cargo spaces. So, and similarly, some of the other six point, um, some of the other six point Corsair ships tell a similar story. Uh, the Tripoli, now we're into the One Masters, and I should have said this at the beginning, but I've got, you might have noticed, I've got all the Barbary Corsair ships. So I have all 1 through 38, all the numbers. So I was missing, I think, the Jaguar's Teeth for a while, and then I got that to complete my faction collection. So in this case, you're actually seeing all of the Barbary Corsair ships in the game. And I don't have to give the caveat that I don't have some of them, because in this case I do. So the Tripoli, and it's easier to acquire because Barbary Coast isn't a super rare or super expensive set. And, uh, and all their ships are common, uncommon, or rare. Um, at least, I'm pretty sure, let's hope. <laughs> uh, the Tripoli, starting off the One Masters. The Corsairs kind of excel with two and three masters, and the four masters are often a little bit lackluster or just not quite effective enough for the cost. And the one masters are kind of similar. They're good, but not quite good enough. So two and three masters are kind of like the Barbary sweet spot, I guess. Uh, this one has the S immunity, but not really a lot else. I mean the speed, but I don't know. This one is tough to figure, figure out a roll for. They don't have any flotillas, so you can't get go that route. I would probably just do empty gold runner, but in that case, the Griffin is far better. Uh, the Viper's Bite. This one also has two cargo and SSS speed. She does have uh, two points lower cost and a much better cannon, but plus one to boarding rolls. Um, so this one is kind of like a tiny gunship, but you don't really want to spend 11 points on a gunship, you know, if you put a captain aboard, so... I would do empty gold runner, maybe combine it with like raiding, you you could board, but you're probably not going to win many boarding parties either. So the Viper's Bite, kind of cool looking, cool sounding, but doesn't really do all that well in games. The Whisper is a pretty good ship, here's another six pointer. This one only got one mass though, two cargo. The key here is blazing speed, so with no cargo you can move SLS, which is fantastic. Um, on the way out without a helmsman, and then on the way back with two coins, come back at SL after exploring a wild island. So the Whisper is pretty good actually, just not quite on the level of some of the other six point cheap ships like the Queen of Sheba and the Griffin. The Majestic is an overpriced cheerleader, like we've seen elsewhere in other sets. Um, so I would only, like with the other ones, I would just recommend using her 100 points plus, anything lower, and she's probably going to be either not able to use her ability enough and or just overpriced and kind of useless. So, this one is tough to use. Um, I did use her in Command the Oceans a bit, and it was, I think it went pretty well, but again, unless it's a really gigantic game, you're not going to use cheerleaders very much, if at all. So, uh, the Carthage is actually a pretty good one. She's got good speed and cargo. Can't be shot at while docked, so that's perfect for gold running. Gold running, and as a result, this one's pretty good for their one masters, but she's overshadowed by the two masters as as usual. The Nimcha is kind of a specialty ship. 
This one has reverse captain, so you could combine it with a smoke pot specialist. This one has been used at least once in like a fog hopping home island raiding fleet. So you'd combine it with like the hangman's joke of the cursed fleet and like a home island raiding crew or ship ability. Um, which I'll maybe I'll make a video about that kind of fleet sometime because it's one of the more complicated gimmicks out there. But that being said, the Nimcha doesn't really have much going for it. Um, so I wouldn't really recommend using this one. Especially if you have the Tunis, which is their final ship, number 038. This one has exploring built in, so you could probably do an empty gold runner roll or maybe put a helmsman aboard. But in that case, you'd only have two cargo. So, so the Tunis is decent. Tunis and Whisper are their two best one masted gold runners, but overall, their best ships are two and three masters. And, uh, and that wraps this up. So that's all 38 Barbary Corsair ships and Pirate CSG. And I'll see you again soon for uh, episode number 14 of the collection review series. Thanks for watching, and uh, feel free to like and subscribe.